good evening it's wonderful to be talking to you today on um regal live i think it's my honor and privilege and for everybody like we all know who subhash is uh, he's our mentor uh, and uh, 21 years of corporate experience 12th year in coaching um mcc so as i was today we're talking about <laughs> about um, coaching competencies and uh, why like why are they there anyway How, why do they matter so let's dive yeah. in sure uh, you know uh, the world is full of self styled coaches uh, who who do not have a formal structured training mentoring certification and credentialing and we know the difference between all the four right uh, so now i also came with uh, two decades of banking experience corporate leadership with all uh, ups and downs along the way two decades is a long time so i have had my own share of success and failures some big ones on both sides so with all that stories i could have easily called myself a coach and started my practice but thankfully uh, when i was making this transition i spoke to a lot of friends about what is coaching and certification one feedback i consistently got from some of those well wishers and friends from uh, the industry the training space especially not coaching as such was get credential yeah. so i just plunged into the credentialing journey in 2013 uh, january yeah i i started my pcc journey and um, if i go back and and reflect on was it a right decision i think that is the best decision i made before becoming a professional mm-hmm. coach because with all that uh, uh, knowledge wisdom that we assume that we have and we can touch lives everything is kept aside as you know to you know we just keep them aside all the ego based cognitive knowledge and and we plunge into the framework now why the framework it's a fabulous process so i say defines coaching as a process it's a Uh, you know it's also a creative process so there's a prefix to that then it says it's a thought provoking and a creative process mm-hmm. so it is thought provoking for the client for sure and it is something creative for the coach i don't think however gifted we are we could be you know robin sharma of the world or tony robbins you know celebrities in that space but icf gives equips you with something that you can be as good as some of those big names in the industry that's the power of the uh, competency and there is nothing that can replace it for sure yeah does it answer yeah i think um, as humbly as you can put it and yet with the strength of uh, how much you believe in it because i've heard you talk about it a lot a lot like that's what we talk about all the time so i heard you say framework thought provoking creative process creative for the coach and you also said that it equips you with something that somebody who is not credentialed um could have in your 20 years of leadership uh, subhash you were on the other side of the coaching scenario you were in the leadership role you were corporate and then you moved into coaching both looking at both of those sides you know um how would you say that the framework and the competencies um work on both sides of this like the corporate world when you are being coached versus being um a coach yourself how does the framework fit in in both yeah. these areas so by the way i i got introduced to coaching when i taken a sabbatical between my corporate and my you know entrepreneurial journey uh, so there's something uh, perhaps you are not aware uh, so i had already made up my mind Uh, to leave corporate and plunge into entrepreneurship i was just figuring out what should i do i thought i'll do functional training uh, consulting uh, you know anything in that space where i had two decades of experience but that's where i went to insead and experienced coaching so i'll speak as uh, hypothetically how it is like getting coached when you're in the corporate mm-hmm. versus when you're becoming a coach now uh, one thing that we we keep telling among ourselves some of the friends in the community common friends is that you know i wish i had a coach when i when i got my first leadership uh, position so you know i was number 2 in a branch in my first 3 years 
got promoted after three years to become a leader. And my joy of corporate life ended there. Right, first three years, your number two, uh, and I had some great managers in those three years. They take care. You're, you know, just enjoying life, learning. But then once once the uh, the crown is put on your head, the the crown mm -hmm. of thorns of a leader, then it becomes difficult. And Shweta, uh, friends listening to this, the old friends from the industry will uh, acknowledge. I had my first biggest failure in that three years of my leadership. That is in my fourth and fifth year of my leadership. If I if I had a coach, I would have processed that failure very differently. Yeah. And, you know, uh, and it was my lowest point in my life. By the way, in SEAD, as part of the admission process, we had to write an article on, uh, you know, what was the biggest failure and how did you uh, come out of it? So when I wrote that in the application, I felt this alone will see me through. But there's so mm -hmm. much of, and it was a single, uh, uh, you know, battle against the system and otherwise. So, uh, you know, if, if, if you had uh, coaching as a, as a supportive function, especially an independent outside coach, not somebody mm -hmm. coaching from within. And, you know, I always maintain internal coaching is an oxymoron. That doesn't work. Uh, leaders can coach, but not the professional coaching that you and me do. So, in turn, you know, if I had a coach at that time, maybe the journey would have been similar from an external uh, view. But my experience would have been very different. It would have been far more fulfilling, for sure. And maybe I wouldn't have even left that space. Mm. Today, you know, some of the CEOs that I coach, I tell them, some of them say that, uh, you know, I want to become a coach like you. You're, such, you're doing such deep work. You're touching lives and all that stuff. I say you can touch more lives any day. While I am touching lives one at a time, you can do hundreds as a CEO. So uh, leaders tapping into coaching as a leadership style, tapping into coaching as a consciousness, and, and you understand this better than me, is something that is transformational in the corporate space. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, last point, I, I grew up as an adult in the corporate space thinking that, you know, emotions is not for the workplace. You know, we, mm -hmm. somewhere we picked up that, you know, we don't bring our emotions into a workplace. But then, you know, if I don't bring my emotions into the workplace, then I am not there. I am yeah. a bundle of emotions myself. Yeah, so coaching at workplace was always very relevant. And now more relevant, you know, the kind of uncertainty the leaders are going through, the pressure on performance, and they're all, always on a spotlight, thanks to the social media and other things, right? You're always on a sp spotlight as a leader. So coaching can be a huge benefit uh, if leaders embrace them as they're leading, right? Or uh, as they're trying to lead, yeah. Um. It, it's just so calming to listen to you, Subhash, uh, uh, whenever you're talking. Uh, there are so many um, anecdotes and stories that you have with your coaching and your corporate world. And thank you for the vulnerability with which you shared failure. Uh, not very many people talk about failure the way you do. Uh, just want to take a moment to acknowledge that. And um, wanted to ask you if there are any um, interesting anecdotes or transformational stories that you have, something like really that touched you uh, while you were with, with, with these competencies, uh, whether it was a team coaching or coaching a leader, um, anything that was that deeply touched you while using the coaching process and the competencies, that transformation, what happened? Uh, would you like to share with our audience today, anything like that? Yeah, I, I'll share uh, one of my first paid clients. I mean, he proudly claims I am your first paid client. This is in April 2013. And I have his permission to share this. Uh, if at all uh, the, the book comes out, this will be part of that book, not the story. <laughs> uh, we'll share a lot more details there. But, you know, uh, just sharing. This guy just calls me. Uh, both of us are in Bangalore saying that I want to meet you. And he had already experienced coaching. So he knew coaching, what coaching was, uh, because he, he worked with the European MNC uh, and he had an external coach. So uh, when he came and met me, 
he said, you know, I know uh, I have a problem with related to my work. He, he, he did like that. I want you to just focus on that. You coaches go all over, right? And, and he had budgeted around uh, one hour at a, at a coffee shop. And, uh, and we started talking about the career. There is something deeply painful that had just happened during the week. He was fired, you know, since I had the permission. And uh, it, it came as a shock. And he was a performer, super performer. Now, you can imagine the, uh, the, the trauma of first getting fired. Then he had not informed the family, anyone else. And uh, the notice period was for three months. So he had to figure out something in those three months. And he was in deep, you know, financial debt. Uh, uh, though fit for a young guy, <clears throat> not very fit. Uh, had huge career aspiration, comes from a very simple middle class family, was an engineer and had dreams of becoming a CXO, CEO kind of a thing. <clears throat> you know, uh, three months down the line, he was not relieved. So something passed up him and his boss. That, that was the first shift, right? Uh, and that engagement went on for one year, you know, in a structured way. He's an engineer. So very committed to the process, very structured. And over the one year, uh, he, he not only retained the job, went on a promotion to overseas. After two years there, he quit that company on his terms, moved to another company. Then after around two years, he left that also. Now he works with the, another European uh, uh, MNC. Now he's out of all debts. Some of the relationships that he had problems, most of them he has healed, not 100%. Some of them, I see them as work in progress, but you know, he says some things cannot be resolved, so we just live with it. Uh, so financial, relationship, and career. He, he handles a fairly large uh, region, and he's one of the uh, few CXOs in the company who is a non-European, and the only Asian in the, in, at the senior level. So the point is, on all parameters of life, he has shifted. Now, the guy who started with this, we went all over for the next two and a half hours. Now, I was new. I was still on my PCC journey. So I was figuring out myself. And, uh, you know, the client shifted. Now, the, the engagement ended long back. You know, we are good friends now. As I always say, coaching is a lifelong relationship. It's just not a engagement for six months or one year or nor it is an individual session right uh, it's a relationship it's a process now uh, you know what also comes to my mind in this case which i keep sharing with our mentees is you know in this case i think both i was a newbie so there was no scope for ego as a coach for sure and and mm -hmm. he was working with the mnc accomplished already so there is no you know wisdom and experience also disturbing me I think both of us surrender to the process. And for me, uh, you know, it, it's it's a divine grace that uh, one of when one of your first clients holds the mirror to you that the coaching is bigger than you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two years later, when I started training and mentoring, I still I'm very clear that a lot of things happen. The shifts happen in the client in spite of me and also to some extent in spite of the client. Well, the client mm -hmm. is taking all the initiatives, actions, and staying focused. But still, there is something that is bigger at a higher level. Wow. And, and that's what happens. And he's, he's one of my first clients. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was also lucky that the, the, the process got out of flying start thanks to him. So, it was all, I know, I'm going back to your question. It's all the process, process, process. Nothing else. We didn't try out anything differently. We just stayed with the process. And Regal at 60, you know, was one of the things that I did very early with him. One of the few clients where I do uh, this early because I felt he needed it. Regal at 60 for the benefit of viewers is, is a framework that goes beyond the wheel of life, circle of life. And with all humility, even beyond Ikigai, this goes much deeper. So, you know, he's, he's somebody who benefited. Now, uh, I'll back it with the data point. Just few years later, recently, a couple of years back, the family went on a vacation to Europe, some 40 mm -hmm. days vacation. So his wife asked him, 
No, that Excel that you do with Subhash, why don't you carry it? We'll have some time. We can mm -hmm. we can refresh it sitting in somewhere in Europe. Right? Of mm -hmm. course, the fellows are aware and she also had shifted, right? The, the cascading mm -hmm. effect of the benefit to the family. So that, that's that's one of my you know biggest success stories and early on in, in coaching career. Everything from the process. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much. It, it's just so inspiring, you know, every time you say the process is greater and the transformation happens in spite of the coach and it's sometimes in spite of the client as well. That is huge, really. Yes. Thank you for sharing that story so much. And, and as a wife, I know how important it is for women to know that particularly when um, men are in these and I'm not saying women are also there. So as a partner, I would say. It's, it's important to see that your partner processes these emotions. And I'm just so grateful to this process and that I'm learning from you as well at Regal. You're also a, a mentor coach, Subhash. You've been training us for um, ACC, PCC. What is the, so these competencies that form the framework, the process, um, if I may, I don't know, is there a favorite one that you have a favorite competency? And um, is there one? So very quickly, because you're very short on time. So I want answers to both of these. And and um, which is the one that you think uh, mostly coaches, new coaches, uh, like me also sometimes, uh, don't pick up easily? So which one is your favorite? And which one do you think new coaches don't really pick up very easily? And you're not very happy about it. <laughs> Yeah, so when when I started the journey, it was very clearly listening. Because mm -hmm. as a sales leader, business leader, I knew that is something I had to work on. Quickly, it evolved to presence as a competency. Somewhere midway, it became coaching presence. It was I was very fascinated. If I have the presence, everything will fall in place. But in 2019, when we uh, launched our Regal Coach Certification, uh, I introduced the word uh, mindset. So coaching mindset was part of our uh, training modalities even before ICF came up with CC2, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so for me now, if you ask me, it's CC2, coaching mindset, embodying coaching mindset. Because if yeah. you crack that, if I'm able to embody coaching mindset as a coach, then there is no doing coaching. Then the mm -hmm. whole coaching will happen from a state of being. And that is the yeah. toughest. That is the toughest because that is the competency where ICF speaks of uh, tapping into intuition. And, and Shweta, you know, as an access consciousness practitioner also, how difficult it is to be in that space where you can tap into uh, that, that higher consciousness or intuition. Once you're able to tap that, then everything is just, just happening, right? It's a flow state. That's why that's yeah. my favorite. And that is something which I think most of us don't get. Yeah. Because we are, we are still structured in a way to find the process and looking at a binary process of 0 to 1. Now, that is very unfair to the coaching framework of ICF or even other ways. For me, it is all about coaching mindset. It, it almost sounds like, you know, like how in meditation we say when you said the flow state, it's like happening from... Uh, we also talk about being to doing and you did say it's not even fair to the process if you're doing coaching like coaching can't be a doing it's a being and with that presence the cc6 it becomes more of the presence thank you for sharing that with us and i think the uh, coaching mindset conversation is a very deep conversation can't happen in two minutes so yeah. uh, thank you for that. For that. Yeah. <laughs> i think i'm longer than 20 minutes for sure <laughs> I think we need to do a masterclass on that one too, <laughs> right? I'm very eager to hear your points of views about around this, maybe later. Um, what else? Uh, what else is uh, is special to you about these competencies, Subhash? Uh, anything you'd like to share with the upcoming coaches, uh, people who are pursuing their PCC journeys, or other than focusing on the presence? And I don't know if you can even focus on it. But other than what you already shared, what is it that you would like to share with uh, upcoming coaches that would inspire them to you know, be more in that flow state? Uh, it's easy to learn the process. You know, that's mm -hmm. what I feel having mentored coaches and you know, gone through it myself. You know, mm -hmm. learning the initial stages of the process and practicing is easier. But then, you know, when you deepen the practice, uh, you know, a lot of surprises come up 
then a lot of challenges come up. That's why the continuing education that ICF mandates for renewal every three years, the CCUs and now the, the whole focus on continue to learn and grow remains relevant for an ICF coach. So whether you are an early stage coach or a you know experienced successful coach, we need to continue uh, deepening the process within us, which is embodying the mindset. That's why uh, our focus, you have attended our Coaching Unlimited where we focus so much on the depth of the process yes. right and some some things just emerge out of it uh, during the coaching unlimited uh, you know uh, uh, in our recent regal nest just going through that uh, definition of coaching uh, competency number six listens deeply like listens actively uh, something came up for the first time for me and i was surprised by that similarly coaching unlimited is an experiment. So if I will stop you there and ask you what that was because I don't want to miss that moment. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. So what was it? Uh, what was uh, the, the that new thing, thing that came up for you when we were talking about CC six listening actively? You said something came up which was something new for you as well. Frankly, you know, I have to look at my journal. Uh, maybe I okay, put it. No, I, I was just very curious. What was it? No, that no, was something new for came you? and I was hit by it. So I thought, wow, right? I never looked at it from this point of yeah. view. Listening as a competency. Yeah. So I'm saying so, there are layers of each competency which will unfold in front of us once we just surrender to the process and allow it to unfold. We have to be in that state of allowance for that competency to come up, right? We don't do that. Beautiful. As a coach. Beautiful. Yeah. Especially if you are an experienced coach, no? You know, somebody told a friend, a common friend that you know, some of you coaches, I mean, I don't know, uh, that, you know, we, we carry that aura of having arrived. I said, then yeah. I'm not a coach if I carry that aura. Right? I, yeah. I'll never arrive in this lifetime as a coach. <laughs> it's a constant progress. And that is that is the one thing that really deeply touched me when I first met you and attended the ACC with you those uh, three days each time and that little time I got lucky to spend with you on the way to the airport, you know, that that humility and that I have arrived uh, is not there. And if I may say so, I, I was just reading this book on uh, uh, the law of attraction also and, and the vortex and talks about uh, this allowing thing that, yeah. you know, the more you uh, keep going closer to who you are, to being who you are, to the being that you truly be, the more you are in allowing of, you know, maybe being the coach also, if we can address it that way. So we are so, at already up. Yeah, we, Sorry. We, we, we think we glorify acceptance, right? But for me, allowance is still a, a level deeper. Right? Do you think we have the that, time to just touch upon what that is? So, you know, uh, pretty much any situation that we face, uh, which is mm -hmm. not aligned with our point of view, we resist naturally. We have a point of view which is contradictory, for example. Yeah. So the first first uh, level could be resistance. Then yeah. I see that as an acceptance, which is, you know, it still comes from a higher ego state. If you talk, look at it from a transaction analysis point of view. Allowance is, we are just able to witness, which is what we speak of in coaching, being a mirror. Mm -hmm. That is being a best coach. Right? Allowance, you are not distracted either way, plus or minus. That's what being neutral is in classical professional coaching. This is yeah. fine. Then there is no judgment. No, there is no point of view. Yeah. So being in allowance. So more and that's you where can... I think the competencies really come and unfold in front of us when you are in allowance. I don't think it's fair to give me such little time to talk to you when you talk about things like that. Then I want to talk to you more. <laughs> And you'll be like, no, we're done. So, but this is a, we'll a, long, a longer uh, webinar. Uh, this is beautiful this. because I, I, I am going to take you up on this. If, if you, if you don't do a live, then ask you personally what that means because that is that was a very deep thought. So, thank you so much for sharing that. And the competencies play a, a very great role. Yes. I heard you talk about coaching unlimited that we would attended in February, and that's coming up again in November. I hear. Yes. So, what in is Bangalore? that about? Yeah. Tell us. Please. We're coming yes. back to Bangalore, uh, the sixth edition, <clears throat> trying out non-residential for the first time after five editions of residential. We're also trying a variant, uh, two days focusing on ICF competencies, everything that we discussed today and more, uh, and uh, with active support, 
Uh, not not more support. John, Sarao, and PK Narayanan being there, three three of us come together. Three tormentors at John, as John <laughs> says. <laughs> so three of us will do two days, November 14th and 15th, uh, on on competencies. November mm -hmm. 16th and 17th, all three of us will be there. We'll focus on the business side of coaching, the the branding quotient of coaching, everything that we need to succeed in a in in, in a professional coaching. Now, the, the underlying theme is be, become a professionally successful coach, become a mm -hmm. commercially successful coach. And again, uh, something that we use extensively, Shweta, is, you know, the base of the triangle is about the coaching competencies and the framework. The other angle is about the business and branding. But everything also depends on the deep work <clears throat> that we speak of, deepening the presence that Marcia speaks of. Yeah. So, you know, we, we are going to play at the confluence of all the three during those four days at Bangalore, November 14 to 17. This is for practicing wow. coaches. Coaches are not on the early stage. Somebody who has, yeah. who has finished basic level of training certification and some experience, they'll get the full benefit. You know, you found a lot of value yourself. How was it for you, uh, those three days in Mumbai? I think I haven't stopped raving about it with whoever I meet. And I, I still believe people are not very clear. So all those who have been asking me what Coaching Unlimited is has is about. So it is about competencies and it is about business development. And I believe, uh, like you said, Subhash, uh, beautifully, that if you've been practicing for a while, then you can see clearer um, what is it that you've been missing that you can now put in place? What is it that uh, can be added to your competency, skill level, as well as uh, the business quotient of it? So I think it's a beautiful coming together of three amazing MCC uh, uh, coaches like you and John. PK is there with the business development, and he's amazing with that. Um, so I'm just very fond of all three of you, uh, not only because you're amazing people, but um, because you uh, walk the talk, I feel, <laughs> you know. So I think uh, it's a great um, inspiration to just be in your presence. Uh, again, not out of just saying it, but I've seen it uh, in practice. So I would say that it's something that you should not miss if you are serious about coaching. And if you're not well, then there's absolutely no need to go. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. really. so, and it uh, comes with uh, 38 CCUs, all that you need for your yeah. renewal of credentials, ACC, PCC. That's, yeah, that's, the, that's even better. Yeah, also for the higher credentials, PCC or MCC. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't know that because I was just uh, entering my ACC journey. But this is like how they call, you know, Sohaga and Sone Pe Sohaga, how we say in Hindi. Yeah. You know? uh, so anything else that you would like to leave our audience with? Um, guys, 14, 15, 16 November, Bangalore, uh, 14 and 15 competencies, 16 business development. And so by making sure... 16, yeah, this so they can, either choose, they can either choose 14, 15, 16, 17 separately, yes. or they can choose all four days and get the best out of it. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. And if anyone wants to know more about it, who can who can they contact? Coaching Unlimited? Just uh, reach out to uh, Anirudh you know, uh, on the Regal webpage. You'll, you'll find us all over. So I'll go to the website and just put a request there. We'll reach out to you. Yeah, or we'll, even in one of these lives, you can just put in a comment yeah, and one of okay. us will reach and out we'll to you. Yeah, the team is awesome. constantly monitoring. Yeah. So, Bash, I'm not very happy to say bye to you right now. But unfortunately, we are um, at the end of half, almost half an hour. Anything else you would like to say before we say uh, we bid everybody a good night for tonight? Yeah, you know, one of my personal favorites uh, is, you know, ICF very kindly has shortlisted me a couple of years back as ICF coach of the week. You know, I was the first from this part of the world. Perhaps you don't know this. So they asked I me didn't. for a coach. Yeah. So, you know, without thinking, I, I just said, uh, I, I feel it truly, I am truly blessed to witness the transformation shift in my clients through coaching. And that I owe to the process and the power of the process, right? So it's a transformation shift in the clients. I'm only a witness, right? I'm not even talking about partnering there, but more as a witness. And I feel truly blessed to be in that space. Because then as a higher consciousness takes over, whether you talk about it as a process, competency framework, or something beyond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's my closing remarks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so you. Much. That was amazing.